All right. Welcome back to another edition of Sunday Tai Chi, or whenever you're choosing to watch the video, it's totally up to you. Um, and uh, I say welcome back, but also welcome to new people. If some new people found us, that would be great. I don't know how, but it happens. Surfing YouTube videos. If you're brand new, this is sort of a smorgasbord class. We do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And um, uh, everything else you need to know is probably in the description of the video. And this little movement is wrapping the pole. We just do this to loosen up. So my arms are slack. I'm just making this arm movement is just made by turning my waist. Turning my waist is made by driving up through my legs. You can feel the shifting of your weight from leg to leg as you turn, or you can consciously drive up through one leg and push over, right? So I can go here. That really gets my arms moving. Okay. So I don't always have to shift my weight in the direction that I'm turning. So I could switch it, I could go here. And now I'm turning away from the leg that I'm shifting my weight into. This is just stuff to keep this keep our practice interesting. Any, uh, just about every method we've tried, we have found an exception somewhere in Tai Chi. There's an exception to just about every rule. Um, I hate, if you don't like that, it's too bad. <laughs> you, maybe you haven't studied with enough teachers. But there's variations of everything. And everything we do in this class, there's many variations of. We're just doing some shoulder rolls. As far as I know, this is not Tai Chi or Qigong. Let's go around the other way. Got to loosen the shoulders. We store a lot of tension in our shoulders. So the moon is full. The moon was full this week. So we'll do a set of lunar movements and um, it seems like we just did those um, but I'm going to try to do some different ones. I looked at my notes and you can see I'm actually dusty from looking at my notes and I found some uh, new lunar movements that we can try. Okay, let's move up to our neck. Be very gentle with your neck. Look up and down. So some of our movements are going to, um, we'll be moving our neck, but generally in our Tai Chi form, we're not going to do a lot of looking up and looking down. That's, that's actually why we supplement our form with Qigong, because Qigong does a lot of things that you just don't see in our form. And, and the, the two don't have to be exactly the same. So for instance, um, I'll give you a good example. So let's look uh, straight ahead and tip the head from side to side. So there are people who do farms where their hands never leave this fair lady position, okay? But we do things in, in Qigong where we're holding balls and stuff like this and, and, uh, um, and bending our wrist more. We do, we, you never um, arch your back in the form as far as I know, but we do you know, Qigong, where we radically move the spine, right? So um, let's massage the neck and shoulders. And I think as we discussed in our last class or session together, that um, 
normally we all gather to practice Tai Chi and we're all keyed up and we need to relax. But these days you might be uh, down in, in your temperament and need to be brought up a little bit. So uh, why don't we uh, pat our body to awaken the chi. And um, I'm not accusing you guys of sitting around all day. I know some of you are busier now than ever. I'm busier now than ever. And uh, if zero free time. Your whole body. Some uh, energy workers say to kind of cup the palm when you pat your body. But that's okay. Do whatever works. Whatever feels good. All right, great. So why don't we do, um, let's see. We'll start out with a large open movement. Um, this is a neat one. We haven't done this in a long time. This is uh, returning the moon to the sky. So this is one, uh, again, this violates some rules. We're gonna come up on our toes. And oh, now that we're starting a serious movement, I'm gonna put on some gloves so you can um, differ, easily differentiate my left and right hand. Um, and um, so again, we're gonna start out uh, doing some things that you wouldn't do in our Tai Chi form. In fact, I'm gonna be looking up, I'm gonna be rising up onto my toes. Um, so that's two things right there that I wouldn't, and I'm reaching way up, we don't do that either. So, so this is called returning the moon to the sky. So um, it's real simple. So we're just going to come to one side. Oh, another thing is I'm gonna start with my feet diagonal. I oftentimes tell you to have your feet parallel. Um, there's a reason for that. In this case, it doesn't really matter. So you can have your feet diagonal and we're just going to come, I promise we'll do it now. So we come out to here and remove, return the moon to the sky. And then we'll go to the other side. So I'm going kind of obliquely from corner to corner. I'm not going way side to side. And I just, um, sort of froze there, but, but we can just reach up and then just come right back down. And when you come into center, you can sink down as far as you wish, okay? So I'm just sort of wakening up the large muscle groups in my legs. Inhale up, exhale down. You don't have to do it all in one breath. unless um, you played trombone or uh, tuba in high school and you have excellent breath control, massive lung capacity. So either breathe normally or generally inhale on the up and generally exhale on the down. So again, nice open movement. A little bit of a twist, but not way too much of a twist. How about one more to each side? So you could be going way down. If you wanted to, you could be going way down, but I'm not going to. Okay. All right. We're turning the moon to the sky. <clears throat> let's see. So let's go from a big open movement to a, a smaller, more restricted movement. And again, there's a reason for everything. Um, the reason for restricting my movements sometimes, or I don't know if that's a good term for it, but you get more stretching and pulling. So let's do plucking stars. Stars also have a um, lunar aspect, right? Um, 
I was just noticing, I hope my head wasn't cut off right there, you know, move. If my head was cut off, fine, it's, you don't need to see my head anyway, but, uh, um, so just to be on the safe side, if you couldn't, my hand was just going like this, right? No big deal. If you couldn't see my hand, if you still can't see my hand, I'm coming way back here. My hand was just going like this. Okay, that solves that mystery just in case you couldn't see my hands. Okay, um, so plucking stars, we start holding a ball. So palm facing palm, and then you roll the top palm upward, roll the bottom palm downward, and look in the direction that your fingers are pointing, but you don't turn, okay? And you don't come up to here, so, we're, so this is what I mean by restricting our movement. We're making um, a big S or a ball, either way you wanna, and, and by rotating the palms upward and downward, we're stretching and pulling, and then by turning, you're stretching and pulling more here, right? So less is more. So by restricting, restricting this somewhat, I'll show you on the other side, switch the hands, just roll the ball, so by restricting it, you should feel lots of pulling through the fascia, not necessarily through muscles, muscles, but through ligaments and tendons and other connective tissues. Okay, back to here. We'll just do one more on each side. So then roll that upward. Breathe freely. I'm also sinking down just because I like to. You could just be standing normally, but I just like to take any opportunity to strengthen my legs. So what I mean by sinking down, you can't see. So I'm down like this, right? So let's go up to here. Okay, turn to the side, breathe freely. Okay, so let me just show you what I mean by restricting our movement. So if I went like that, that's not restricting my movement, right? So, so by just staying here, not turning, not reaching, but, but stretching and pulling. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, great. And you can pause and do 10 of those if you want. Okay. Um, that's plucking stars. Um, there's another version which is not as uh, twisty, let's say. So my palms are up and down up and down and then the other version is just to come around to here oops there you go okay and look this way and then here this one's more relaxing excellent excellent so not as twisty and stretchy, but it has its merits. Um, and then um, we moved around quite a bit. So let's do uh, some dingji or a holding of a posture. And um, I have a apology or correction to make. Um, I once we used to do um, cradling the moon against the chest, and I remarked that I said, "Boy, this is awfully like um, embracing the tree." And it turns out it is exactly embrace the tree. Cradling the moon against the chest is done in an empty stance. So my feet in, in embrace the tree, my feet are parallel, equally weighted like this, perfectly great, I mean, nothing wrong with this, but cradling the moon against the chest is an empty stance, so, so my weight's on my back leg, and I'm just holding the moon against my chest, great, or a little bit lower, here, something like this, yeah, there you go. Thank you. 
this way. And then uh, we need to do the other leg. So again, this is building up a lot of strength in your legs, but don't let the fact that your legs may be screaming at you bring any tension into your arms. Your arms are loose, very loose. The elbows are sunken. Okay, great. Very relaxing. Okay, cradling the moon against the chest. How about, so, and don't forget, let me forget that correction. Um, so let's contrast this, and we can take that empty stance, switch legs, if you remember which leg you were on. We can contrast this with our moon embracing palms. So, so you're going to roll your hands out just like you're holding the moon. This is another um, example of what I'm saying that, that I'm holding a rather small ball here so my, I'll come out uh, um, obliquely so you can see there's a bend in my wrist, right? And, and there are those who never bend their wrist in Tai Chi. Uh, and so they would be more like, like that. At, at the most, they'd be like that. But as long as we have a reason, again, by bending the wrists, I'm getting tremendous stretching, no tension, no tension, but, but good stretching and pulling. And then as long as I'm oblique here, I'm going, to, when I switch legs, I'm going to, um, Switch sides it doesn't make any difference. So and then so com to compare, there's this. So and then and then by doing this, you feel this pulling and stretching. Okay, but don't confuse that with tension. Right, I'm not. Uh, nothing is tight. But I'm getting a lot of pulling, stretching through here. All right, excellent. You can shake your hands out. Okay, good. Um, let's do one more before we do our form. So, this is another good comparison of Tai Chi versus Qigong. In Tai Chi, we have a movement uh, in our form and in many forms called uh, Ben Bo Shoot Tiger. It looks, it looks something like this. And in every form, it's different. In our form, it, it is um, exactly something like that. Okay, so empty fists. Okay, but in Qigong, uh, so this one's called uh, Shoot the Moon. Um, so in this one, I don't need fists because Qigong is not a martial art. So there's, there's, uh, we don't need. You don't see fists, even empty fists in uh, Qigong. We can do this one two ways. Um, we can go uh, side to side and not move our feet, or we can step. So let's start out not moving our feet. I'm not going 180 degrees. I'm going obliquely towards each corner. And all it is is basically um, like this. And then if I haven't mentioned, Orange is right, yellow is left. Okay, so here, and then we can, I'm not moving my feet, I'm just shifting slightly. We can go here, and then here. Feels really good, so now we're getting stretching in here too. Here. As always, you could be uh, you could have a wider stance, sinking down, right, if you wanted to, or I have a photo of Master Yan doing this. He's the master, he's the master of understatement. Um, I wish I had a video of him doing it, a, a photo of Qigong is, is like worthless. 
Okay, that's one way of doing it. And then we can step out. This is more like Tai Chi. Um, so I'm going way back here. Hello. Okay. So um, again, if you get the left and the right confused, you can just pause it or rewind it. So that's that's the beauty of uh, of this. So I'm going to come out to here. I'm not even bother to tell you the left and the right because it's just confusing uh, with me stepping towards you. because uh, your, our left and right are, are reversed. So I, I, I'm not even bothering to tell you which way. I'm gonna come in one, you can't see my feet anymore. Okay, great. Um, I'll do that from side to side once, just so you see that again. So, so it's, um, it's here. Great. If we had more time uh, or the inclination, you can go back and forth across the whole dojo and do that. You can certainly hit pause and go up and down your hallway doing that. Um, and by all means, if you didn't, if you were confused by that, then definitely hit pause and make sure you get it, right? If we were here together, I'd make sure you got it, have, have it, but I can't tell. I don't know if you got it or not. So. Um, Take a little water break and uh, we'll do our form. And let me say that um, this time with the COVID, uh, if you are lucky enough to be sitting around the house all day, I dare say you could take this time to learn your form if you don't already know it. And, and I know that we've discussed the many different types of learners there are, but I will say they all have, there's different ways of learning, styles of learning. Um, I will say they all have one thing in common, is that you must know what you don't know in order to know what you need to learn, which is the reason why teachers give quizzes, is, is you need to know that you didn't know something, otherwise they don't, the teacher doesn't know what to teach you. So what I would recommend is hit pause on the video. And remember, pause is just your space bar in many cases, right? So you, and, and then do your form till the point where you forget. And this will be invaluable because when we get to that point in the form when we're doing it together, you'll be like, ah, that's it. But if you didn't know that you didn't quite know it, then you don't know what you don't know. So you need to know what you don't know. So hit pause, I'll take another sip of water, and then and you'll do your form up to the point where you forget what comes next. And then it'll be, it'll make so much more sense when you do your form. It'll be so much more satisfying and constructive. Okay, so I'm gonna come way back here. You know what we'll do? is we'll do the A side and then the transition into the B side and then we'll start the B side all by itself just so you can see the beginning of the B side. But I think we can get through this without me leaving the frame of the video. I think it'll be okay. And um, so relax completely. I'll talk you through it. So you, you've already unpaused, you tried your form, maybe you got up to the fourth movement or something. So watch carefully when we get to the fourth movement and then you'll, and then, uh, you'll never forget again. So do your resting posture. If you don't know our resting posture, look back at some of the other videos where we explain it. Okay. Oh, it feels great. Shift your weight into your right foot. Slide the left foot up, left hand comes up right on your center line. Slide the right foot through. And this is white snake, darts out its tongue. Left hand comes around. This is 
reach up to touch the seven stars of the Big Dipper. This is implied. As the arms come up, left foot steps next to the right foot. Drop the right hand to your waist again. Right foot up. This is carry hammer. Okay, sink back. And this is our white crane. And then switch hands. Right hand replaces left hand. Left hand drops down, right foot pivots. And then white ape swings through branches. Shifting left. Shift back right. Pivoting. Step up and over. Shift right and then shift back left. Elbow strikes the heart. Shift right. Bring the gong. Shift left, I'm doing my little step around and then strike a tiger. We stopped doing that little step around for a while, but I like to do it again. Step up to the corner, strum the lute, sink back. This is our biggest pivot. Pivoting around, step in and back, and inspect horse's mouth. So we can transition now to the B side by arms coming up and down, and then up into dragon pose, shifting my weight back into my left hand. And so, so here comes the transition to single whip, R version. All right, and then strike a tiger, and then pull and push. Push. Maybe you haven't seen the form from this angle, which is why I'm doing it. And then shoulder strike. Shift back into your left foot. We'll hold this hoop shape, pivoting around. Step the left foot in and back. Draw the bucket from the well. Okay, shift back. Or no, you have seen this angle. The angle I'll show you next is the one you haven't seen. I'm mean, turning away from you, sorry. Bye. I'll still describe what's going on. A downward push, and then roll the left palm under, and white snake darts out its tongue, and we're back to the A side. So from the A side, I hate to be facing away from you, we come into seven stars, carry hammer, weight ape swings through branches, etc., etc. So we'll do the B side. Um, Facing the other way, have some water. And remember, um, I guess I didn't mention, the reason why it's so valuable to learn your form is not just to learn it by rote. It's so that you don't have to watch me so carefully and you don't have to think so carefully. Is my weight forward? Is my weight back? Which hand is which? Once you're not thinking about that, then you can think of things. You can put your mind in your dantian. You can think about the the placement of the pelvic bowl. You can think, where is my chi? Where is my yi? All these things that you can't normally think about if you're focused on the correctness of your moves, right? So that's the reason why. Once you learn your, your form, you can go on autopilot and explore other, other things entirely or just relax even more. You can relax so much more when you've got it memorized, right? You, you, your relaxation is just through the roof because you're not because con focusing on correctness brings tension sometimes. Okay, so let's start our B side. I'm facing uh, east now, doesn't matter. Um, so back in our resting posture. Look how I lean back, that's not good. I shouldn't lean, can't lean forward either. There, that's a little bit better. That's about right. That's my good resting posture. Okay, sink into your left foot. Foot back. As I shift back, I turn to the right. That's natural. Turning back to the left should actually step my left foot in and back and bring the hands up. Dragon pose right into single whip. Our version. One of three versions in our form, three radically different versions of single whip in the Yang 88 Sansa form. So this is strike. A tiger. I'm all twisted up. 
untwisting brings the left foot in and back. It brings the right hand back and down. This is pull, followed by push, followed by a shoulder strike. Not too much. Shift back into your left foot. Hold that hoop, as we mentioned. Pivoting the right foot way around. Step the left foot in and back. Draw the bucket from the well. Okay. And then um, shift back. This is the part where I turned away from you before. This is our 90 degree pivot that we do so many of. Downward push. And then white snake darts out its tongue. And we could stop here, or you could see the transition back to the A would be to come to seven stars, and then carry hammer, white crane. Remember, your white crane can be big if you like it. If you want it big, then keep it big. And then white ape swings through branches. We'll just stop there. Okay. Great, great, great. So, um, one other thing. We always do a little circle walking, and we don't go into great, great depth in our circle walking because that's for a Bagua class, but um, we can do it slightly differently each time. And as I mentioned, so this is your kitchen chair. It helps to keep your circle from drifting across the room or to help your circle from turning into a big blob, right? So instead of um, instead of a, a hand movement like or a hand position like this, we can go with moon embracing palms. Okay, this is really hard. This is tremendous twisting in the upper body. Okay, um, so remember moon embracing palms. Here I am. Okay, so. Remember our moon embracing palms. This is what we're gonna, how we're gonna do this. So, here we go. So without critiquing our stepping, I'm gonna focus on the upper body here. I have a nice round circle here, and off we go. So as I said um, last week, um, rather than critiquing overly critiquing your circle walking, I'm just going to say if, if you can do it slowly, you're doing something right. And the slower you can do it, the better you're doing it, right? So, and that includes the whole step should be slow. So if I just stood here, counted to 10, and then took a, and then fell into my step, that's, that's not good. The whole step should be nice and slow. And now with, with our moon embracing palms, this twisting really accentuates the difference between one side and the other. So it's really important to change sides, right? Why don't we uh, shake our arms out and then change sides? So you know what I'm saying? We're twisting so much that you want it to be even on both sides. So maybe you're counting steps or counting revolutions around your chair. Remember to be turning your feet slightly too, kobu and then baibu. Sorry to turn away from you. Maybe we better go back the other way. Remember, no fancy uh, change of directions yet. Maybe we'll show you that sometime, but I'd rather have you memorize other things than our circle walking. Okay, great. You get the idea. And remember, if you intend to go for a walk, and then you look out and it's already 100 degrees, you can skip your walk and just do some circle walking. Okay, so we will end with our favorite Qigong. Lifting water. Oh, here's what we'll do. 
we like to do things backwards sometimes when the moon is full or do different versions. Why don't we do, why don't we reverse our, our, um, our breathing? So, so let's see, so we would normally sink, inhale up and exhale down. So we would normally inhale up, exhale down. Press up as we inhale up, exhale as we sink down. I'm making gross movements. We'll smooth it out in a second. So can we reverse that? So, so start up. So, so let's see. So inhale up, exhale down. So let's, so exhale up, inhale down. exaggerating a bit. One more. Stand and meditate. You stay there. We'll do a quote uh, by Confucius, approximately 500 BC. A healthy person desires everything. A sick person desires just one thing. And thank you so much for joining us and come back next week. It's an extreme pleasure to practice with you. Highlight of my day and uh, really appreciate your support and your interest. And we'll be back together very, very soon.